How is it any different than the way Fox News was covering the immigrant caravans from Honduras? <laughs> I literally do not understand how it went from caravan hysteria to liberals doing the exact same thing now to the Joe Biden administration as Fox News was justifying and legitimizing the, the cruelty that immigrants were subjected to by saying like, oh, well, you know, these guys are coming in caravans and whatnot on us uh, with regard to those facilities. Did your administration ever consider some of the things that the Biden administration is doing? Closing down a border. I still don't understand, by the way, Mr. President, how that would even really work if it's so porous the way it is. You can't close well, it Well, that's why you needed the structure. wall. But now I've built right, almost structure. 500 miles of wall. So it's a much easier situation now. When I took it over, it was a disaster. I but I built 500 miles of wall, and now... You know, you have vast sections. I mean, you see some openings, but the openings get closed. That's what the purpose is. This guy is so funny. Um, and you're promoting it on your show. Shame on you, Hassan. Like, dude, I love the fucking... I love, like, liberalism as a, as a different form of, like, uh, uh, brain problems. Where you just, like, you, you say stuff unironically, like, uh, why are you platforming Donald J. Trump? Yeah, why am I doing that, man? I can't believe I'm promoting Fox News... And also the fucking president, dude. The former president of the United States. I can't believe I'm platforming them. You have to close them. Those contracts have been given a long time ago. And again, that was to get people through. But these are small openings. But uh, that has to get closed. But the wall has made it so much easier for these people. And frankly, I mean, I even hear they want to tear down the wall, if you can even believe it. Tear down the wall. You know, this is... Uh, not not Let, the way you heard about... it from Ronald Reagan. New details. All right, here's a great example of tonight on the war. Here's a great example of like uh, unbiased news coverage looking unbiased news coverage looking at the situation as a border crisis and framing it as though it's a crisis by just straight up adopting right-wing reactionary talking situation points. at our southern border. U.S. authorities seen here deporting migrants, many of them families with young children, to Mexico. More than 5,000 unaccompanied minors now being held, facilities overwhelmed. ABC's national correspondent Matt Gutman in El Paso tonight. Tonight, those new images capturing the heartbreak of migrants, many of them with children in their arms, deported to Mexico by U.S. officials at the southern border, with some saying they weren't told where they'd be taken. This mother from Honduras had hoped to reunite with her children's father in the U.S. She says, I only ask the U.S. government to give me one opportunity because my girl doesn't know her father. Ruben Garcia runs one of the largest migrant shelters in the U.S. The vast majority of them are still being expelled back to Mexico. The Biden administration now urging migrants not to come, but is facing mounting criticism for its handling of this surge. This is the tip of the iceberg right here. The Biden administration needs to begin to step up and respond to this growing challenge. And while DHS says it's turning back single the reactionary part of it, this is actually not as bad as like most of the fucking, uh, this is actually not as bad as most of the coverage that I've seen so far, but the, the reactionary part of it is literally just taking Greg Abbott and, and, or taking like Dan Crenshaw and having like the right wing concerns, um, covered as though it's like a legitimate concern that like the overwhelming majority of Americans have without addressing them. Do you see what I'm saying? Like uh, without actually correcting some of these fears as a uh, straight up fear mongering. Single adult males in most families, ABC News has learned there are now over 5,000 unaccompanied children and teens in Border Patrol custody. That's a spike of 65% in just two weeks. It's an all time record, and one Border Patrol facility for children and teens is at a shocking 1,550% capacity. Biden says his administration child? is scrambling to find space for them. We will have, I believe, by the next month, enough of those beds to take care of these children. At Garcia's shelter, Annunciation House, a busload of migrants from Haiti has just arrived. Adults wearing those ankle bracelets. Children playing with donated toys and the sobs of a pregnant mother separated. That shit's crazy, dude. Ankle bracelets, like. From her husband, who's detained by Border Patrol. Like fucking animals, dude. Room. Garcia is worried about the wave of migrants to come. I foresee that it could become something that we've never seen before, just in the sheer numbers. 
and we're hearing more of those alarming predictions. We have Matt Gutman tonight from El Paso. And Matt, you reported there are over 5,000 unaccompanied minors in Border Patrol facilities now. These children are waiting to be transferred to longer term sites. So, what's causing this bottleneck? And with their being held in those Border Patrol facilities much longer than the legal limit, they are waiting because they anticipate being picked up by government officials who are supposed to take them to facilities specifically designed for children. The problem is the government can't create beds in those facilities fast enough, and there is rising concern among officials for those children's safety. Wait. All right, Matt Gutman with that developing situation. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Okay, um, it's, uh, I'm going to run another ad here before we move on to the Department of Homeland Security uh, Secretary Alejandro uh, Mayorkas, who went on every Sunday news broadcast yesterday and basically told migrants, like, don't come, we're full, don't come, we're full, don't come, we're full, over and over again. Uh, so here's the uh, our uh, ad before we get into that. If you want to see, if you want an ad free broadcasting experience, you need to subscribe. You can do it for $5 or for free. Here's the ad. The message has been straightforward and simple, and it's true. The border is closed. He's basically saying the United States will not secure our border, and that is a big welcome sign to migrants from across. Like, the Biden administration is literally saying pretty much the same things that the Trump administration was saying as far as, like, we're closed. They are, for, they are instead of reversing all of the cruel measures that the Trump administration took, pretty much doing a uh, less, not as like, uh, not as in your face and not as openly cruel uh, uh, policies, but by refusing to reverse some of the uh, Trump era uh, policies, is still enacting uh, or and furthering the cruelty, while Republicans are like, that's not enough. We are, we need you to literally kill the fucking babies. Like, we need you to literally, we need you to straight up straight the fuck up do as uh, uh, treat them as poorly as you possibly can and to this dumbass who keeps saying okay now show grease bro you are so fucking insanely stupid that i do not know how to answer or retaliate your moronic fucking baboon brain take are you are you so fucking dumb that you are comparing greece to the united states of america It's like saying, look at what's going on in Greece. Okay, well then, what's happening in Greece is a perfect example of uh, as to why the fucking Remain policy does not work, okay? Refusing to re take responsibility for a refugee crisis and distributing refugees evenly across the entirety of the, uh, the European Union, which is a much, much more significant economic power, and just... Forcing them to stay in fucking Greece is clearly not the most successful strategy, okay? So what America is doing is basically like if Germany was like, yeah, everyone has to stay in fucking Greece. Just like America is saying all of these immigrants that are coming in and seeking asylum have to stay in fucking Honduras. Sorry. Why are you so uncharitable to your own chat? Because I have morons in my chat, because I'm a political commentator, and people say moronic shit to get a rise out of me all the time. Okay? That's why I'm uncharitable to my chat. Go watch someone who babies you, and, and some of your idiotic and reactionary points of view, if that's what you are looking for. This is not what people come in here for, okay? I'm not uncharitable when someone is like, I don't really understand why uh, you're making this comparison when... You know, uh, a similar one that uh, a similar one could be made to Greece, for example. I'm saying maybe appreciate your viewers more. The ones, the viewers that I appreciate don't come in here to just fucking get me angry, okay? And say like idiotic racist shit or, or make moronic comparisons as though like they're making a sneaky point that's going to own me in the marketplace of ideas. So shut the fuck up about this. Like, <laughs> why don't you appreciate your viewers? Like, shut up. Why don't you appreciate your viewers when they make like really stupid fucking uh, uh, points that derail away from the from the main argument that you're presenting as though this is a as though this is a legitimate criticism of, of the the uh, positions that you're laying out is a silly fucking request. If that's what you want, you're not going to get it.
listen. The way to make money on this platform is by telling you things that you want to hear. Okay? So you should be more appreciative that I'm not doing that and instead fucking correcting your dumbass point of view, especially in a moment where you are literally feigning ignorance or trying to argue by uh, using really silly talking points. There's a reason why most people say we're not covering politics at all on our uh, broadcast. Like, there's no politics allowed. No conversations around politics. This is a very divisive fucking uh, thing to talk about. Across the world. President Trump dismantled the orderly, humane, and efficient way of allowing children to make their claims under United States law in their home countries. The Biden administration dismantled the very effective policies of the Trump administration. No, I think they've created the crisis. Uh, he says he has a plan. I haven't seen a plan. We are expelling families. We are expelling single adults. <laughs> and we've made a decision uh, that we will not expel young vulnerable children. We have seen uh, large numbers of migration in the past. Uh, we know how to address it. Let me tell you the crisis. We need to address our immigration laws in this country that are broken. What we see at the border is one exhibit of the, one exhibit of evidence of that. The public health exclusionary order. They lifted that order as it relates to minors. Well, guess what we have now at the border? Lots more minors. Are you concerned that the word will go out and you'll get unaccompanied minors from all over the world trying to come to our southern border. It doesn't work that way, uh, Chuck. The, the system is a complex one. They have created this, this crisis of children. That, what Chuck Todd did there is just disgusting. Like, this is what I mean when I say, like, what are you doing? You, you think this is, like, adversarial journalism? Like, adversarial journalism is when you just take a fucking right-wing point of view, a right-wing position, and just blurt it out without any sort of context uh, attached to it whatsoever. Well, a lot of Americans are saying, sir, that uh, immigrants are coming in to rape our w beautiful white daughters. Like, just say that, too. You know? Why don't you just go all the way with it? You go balls to the walls with it. Like, uh, sir, what about the uh, notion that uh, some of these uh, immigrants that are coming are rapists and drug dealers, and some are very fine people? Like, wh why don't you just say that, too? No, you can't, right? That's, like, that's the thing. That that's the hilarity of the situation is that, like, when Trump says it, you're like, oh, wow, I can't believe Trump said such a ridiculous thing. But then I'm going to take other reactionary right-wing talking points and make them seem like they are legitimate criticisms of the American immigration system. Trying to come to our southern border. It doesn't work that way, uh, Chuck. The, the system is a complex one. They have created this, this crisis of children coming in. All of these bogus asylum claims are taking up so much manpower and resources at the border. That means that we also have other threats like increases in fentanyl and other kinds of drug trafficking. We've already talked about this a million times over, but I'll address it one more, once more. The real problem with drugs coming over the border, okay, is not that drugs are coming over uh, fucking in, in the uh, uh, inside of like the cribs of, of otherwise like law abiding abuelas and, and their fucking children, okay? 94% of drugs come through regular points of entry, okay? Through ports. The real way to deal with the drug crisis is by regulating pharmaceuticals in order to make sure that there isn't, uh, you know, uh, overprescription, which is a gigantic problem. And then making drugs legal so that there isn't a black fucking market for them. Okay? So this notion that you will deal with the drug problem by uh, stopping uh, border crossings is idiotic when the CBP's own data shows that it's not where the drugs are coming from. 
or persons on the terrorist watch list crossing into our border. Over That's even more ridiculous. That's like literally never happened. I can't even talk about that. It's such a, it's such a preposterous, such a fucking dumb talking point that uh, conservatives have tried to utilize since 9-11. Uh, uh, it's, I, I, there's no answer to that, okay? Yeah, dude. They're, they're, no, they're not saying Mexican terrorists. They're saying, like, Al-Qaeda is coming through the fucking southern border. It is, like, literally a, a old-school, uh, post-9-11 era talking point that justified the, uh, the Department of Homeland Security's existence and creation. And, uh, they're still going along with it, uh, even though there is zero evidence, uh, to show that. Fucking 20 years later. It's just ridiculous. It's literally ridiculous. For 100,000 people in custody, 13,000 migrant children. This is a historic record for the agency. It's been the reverse of the Biden administration, of the Trump policies, and it needs attention. The traffickers are smart. Cartels are smart. They know our laws, policies. And this started right after the election. In, in the last two months, we've seen a real surge. We strongly... Again, a way to deal with cartels and the black market drugs, for example, is by legalizing the process and making it easy for people to literally fucking come and seek documented work and shelter inside the United States borders. If you did that, you would completely eradicate the cartel presence. Completely. Okay? But you don't want to do that because you want illegal immigrants to come into the country and fuck up the, the uh, labor marketplace because... That's what the American agricultural uh, production relies on. Undocumented immigrants that you can always use against the documented labor force. That's it. A permanent underclass. We urge, and the message is clear, not to do so now. I cannot overstate the perils of the journey that they They provide take. an even bigger opportunity for cartels. That's literal bullshit. That is not true. No, you wouldn't provide an even bigger opportunity for cartels if you legalized it. You're so wrong. Do not come. The president or the administration's um, message is not getting through. This message about don't come now, come later, without due respect, is not being heard down there. I fucking hate this piece of shit, dude. Why the fuck is CNN talking to Henry Cuellar? The message can't be that if you get to our... Like... Oh, God... Just literally, hey, remember when, uh, remember when, uh, Henry Cuellar was, uh, chosen by Nancy Pelosi over Jessica Cisneros? Motherfucker, the most reactionary, uh, Democrat on, in the country. Like, literally the worst, the worst of the worst of the worst of the worst. It's such a piece of shit, dude. Amazon's choice Bezos? Drug runners are going to apply for visas? heard down there the message can't be that if you get to our southern border and get across we're going to process you and release you into our communities my orca says we're not saying don't come at all just don't come now very irresponsible rhetoric for a secretary this is what i was talking about by the way when i said like these motherfuckers literally set up like a round table at the border like they're so disgusting like they're doing super bowl style coverage right now just don't come now very irresponsible rhetoric for a secretary of homeland security and I predict a million people trying to get into this country by the summertime. We have a plan. We are executing on our plan and we will succeed. This is what we do. But one thing is also clear that it takes time. We begin tonight with. All right, boys, we are now moving on to some more fun news that are fucking insane. Uh, and that uh, more fun news that are fucking insane is. Uh, what is happening in Miami and in Florida in general? Because spring break is upon us, which means more poggers content coming from the spring breakers and uh, also uh, just, you know, spring breakers uh, behaving like psychopaths. Obviously, if I was in college right now and I was on spring break, I'd probably behave in a similar capacity. Let's be fucking real. Uh, we're going to get to John Oliver later, okay? I first worked against Cuellar in 2006, getting the Ciro Rodriguez back in office in the primary. Cuellar is literal trash. One of the worst Democrats in the country. One of the worst politicians in general. He's such a piece of shit. Um, okay. Breaking news. A state of emergency in Miami Beach. Officials just announcing they will be extending a curfew through mid-April. 
This was the scene last night. Hundreds of people, mostly without masks, packing the streets, defying that order, causing police to crack down, even firing pepper balls to disperse the crowds. <laughs> Florida leads the country in cases of the UK variant. Miami reporting the highest test positivity of. I wonder. I wonder why this happened. It's almost like if you say Florida's open for business, please come to Florida and please do your business here. Okay. People are going to fucking literally come to Florida to do their business there. Ron DeSantis, what the fuck are you doing? Obviously, people are going to be like, oh, yeah, like, yeah, we're going to fucking party. Of all major cities this past week, 15 states are seeing an increase in cases and in Michigan. Just in the past two weeks, a 92% spike in cases. Experts warn we are not out of the woods just yet, even with vaccinations picking up, averaging nearly two and a half million shots a day, about 10,000 just at this location in Nashville alone. Officials are urging tonight not to let our guard down too soon. ABC's Victor Kendo leads us off tonight from Miami Beach. Tonight, a state of emergency in Miami Beach. They literally fucking... They implemented a curfew out of nowhere saying at 8 p.m. tonight, uh, you will no longer be able to, uh, we're, we're implementing a curfew at 8 p.m. tonight. So, of course, uh, people are like, oh, all right, well, fuck that. I'm going to, I didn't, uh, there's plenty of people that don't know that the curfew is occurring. There's plenty of people who thought like, you know, go to Florida. Florida's open, right? So they just roll over these fucking uh, spring breakers and people who are partying and shit like that because they're thinking like, you know, uh, that uh, everything is open now in Florida. Massive crowds defying an 8 p.m. curfew. Skip that curfew. We all here. <laughs> we all here. No sleep. Police moving in, shooting pepper balls to break up the mostly maskless sea of people. This car set on fire. Quite frankly, I'm concerned that the behavior is getting uh, it's getting a little bit more for uh, us to be able to handle. More than a thousand people arrested since the start of spring break. Some businesses like the popular Clevelander deciding to temporarily close over safety concerns. Miami Beach residents are frustrated. 90% of these kids are good kids, you know, they just want to have a good time. But um, when you get a lot of people together and too much alcohol, it's, you know, it's a problem. Late but you can't have your cake and eat it too, Florida. You can't literally say our businesses are open. And then turn around and be like, oopsie, we realize that everyone's going to fucking storm the beaches. It's no longer open. And expect shit to be normal after you have uh, gotten an influx of tourists. Today, city leaders holding an emergency meeting. It has certainly felt like our city has been a, a tinder over the last few weeks. I have uh, personally had trouble even sleeping at night worrying. Florida reporting nearly 4,000 new COVID-19 infections today. The state leading the nation with the most cases of the highly contagious UK and Brazilian variants. New York City reporting its first case of the Brazilian variant this weekend. All this as travelers are taking to the skies in record numbers and cases increasing in 15 states. Michigan seeing a 92% spike in cases over the last two weeks. We're not out of the woods yet. And we could potentially be at the beginning of another surge in Michigan. The vaccine, still the best defense against the virus. These vaccines are exceedingly safe. They've actually been tested really, really well. The nation now averaging nearly two and a half million days. Why are you playing? Why are you watching replays of 2020 news? Obviously, this is the only thing we're going to do going forward is like every year, uh, you know, we're going to we're going to watch the exact same shit happen again. Uh, Vaccines started getting distributed in Europe. Europe started uh, loosening up restrictions. Europe is uh, like a couple weeks ahead of us, if not a month ahead of us with like spikes. European countries are already increase is watching uh, an increase in COVID cases uh, all over the fucking, uh, all over uh, Europe. So uh, same with uh, the United States. Yeah, this is not 2021. It's uh, 2020 uh, version 2.0, basically into arms good morning mass vaccination sites popping up nationwide this one in nashville providing nearly 10,000 people with johnson and johnson's single shot take care of my 98 year old blind grandfather so it's kind of important to get vaccinated as soon as possible and in ohio beth and stan rosenblum for months only seeing their great-grandchildren from behind glass doors and balconies now 
both fully vaccinated, finally able to give them a hug. I was in tears. It was so wonderful. How about you, Stan? I loved it. <laughs> So nice to see those reunions. Victor Akendo joins us now from Miami Beach. And Victor, a second curfew taking effect tonight, and officials have just announced they're now extending it. Lindsay, this just happened moments ago. These emergency measures will continue to be enforced Thursdays through Sundays until at least April 12th, which they call the end of the spring break season. One last note here, according to HHS, Miami has the highest test positivity rate of any major city in the last week. Lindsay? Victor, our thanks to you. All right, let's take a look at what else is going on in the state of Florida. Here you go, boys. Here is a here is a perfect way to describe what the fuck's happening in uh, Florida in uh, during spring break. Also, ask me how I can raise your credit T-shirt. It's pretty. Funny. It's over, it's over, it's over, baby. Fuck yeah. If it's over, baby. Has there ever been a more representative Florida video on Twitter? No. I mean, this is like this and the Florida woman petting a crocodile on her way uh, home from work are the two most Florida videos you can capture. If you go to the only in date Instagram account, which covers all the crazy stuff people do in Miami Dade, all the locals use that account, really? If the measures are working, why do conservative states have less cases than demon rat states? Facts. What? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe because high population density is oftentimes attributed to Democratic states, and uh, also they have more fucking people in Democrat states? I don't know. Yeah, I don't understand, brother. Why the fuck are, why the fuck are there less new cases in, in Alabama than uh, California, brother? I don't understand. Fuck you. Yeah, Texas also uh, is a demon rat state, too. You know, they got them Latinas, so obviously that's a demon rat state, too. Spring break partying, Miami South Beach. This isn't going to end well next month. Uh, here is another... Remember when you spent an hour trying to find out if anyone in Florida had fucked an alligator? I do remember that. The answer was no. Uh, that uh, the story about a Florida man fucking an alligator was actually untrue. Not going to end it well with Florida. B117 already at 51%. Uh, the B117 variant. Is now dominant in the United States. I'm 99% certain that another surge is on the way April away. Why? The more contagious B117 is surging. Now across the 50% threshold in all cases. In addition to pockets of other variants. A real Florida man wouldn't brag about it. He'd just do it and we'd never know. Also, I know a lot of stupid Republicans in the Northeast Ohio who got sick and eventually actually refused to get tested even though they were laid up for a week with horrible symptoms. <laughs> Why does New York City have more COVID cases than Chickenwood, Alabama? Facts. Get owned, lip tart. Yeah. Uh, fucking a porcupine is illegal in Florida, which means someone tried it. So the worst part about this happening right now is that we are literally at the end. Like we could be at the tail end of the COVID uh, pandemic. You understand? Like if we just, if we just held tight, we are at the fucking finish line and motherfuckers are like, nah, I'm spiking it, dude. Fuck it. I'm spiking it, dude. This is bullshit. Like 
Fuck the vaccines. Who gives a shit? Like, just wait two more fucking months, dude. Like, wait two more months until we have, like, a decent amount of the population vaccinated at the very least. Nope. Fuck that. Thank you. Shouts out to, again, shouts out to Florida. Shouts out to Texas. Shouts out to all the big fucking places that are like, nope, we are opening up, baby. We are opening up, baby. Fuck it. Uh, things are going as well as expected. B117 variants uh, surging in South Florida. Why do we pretend nothing will happen? Miami Beach <coughs> police is now throwing down curvies and closing highways near the beach area to restrict the spring break, spring break crowds. Um, and Miami <laughs> Beach curfew is, of course, not complying with that request. And that's why police are just like fucking literally beating the shit out of kids now. Um, we already saw that the, the, uh, Joker man uh, with the Joker face, uh, celebrating the end of COVID. So, uh, you know, cool things to come folks. So get excited about that. Get excited about all the cool things that are coming. State of emergency has been, uh, declared in Miami amid the spring break partying. This was the scene on 8th street and ocean drive an hour after curfew. So are you still quarantined? Quarantining? I get so confused with so many people, so many places opening up 100%. Um, what do you mean quarantining? No, I'm not quarantining. I haven't been quarantining for a while. Like, quarantining implies that you'd never leave your fucking house. You're supposed to quarantine if you have COVID. Um, what do they think would happen, lol? Hey, but this is a great opportunity to see how well the virus holds up versus high BACs. What? Oh, you mean lockdown shutdown? Yes, there is still a, uh, I am still abiding by some of the isolation, uh, policies, even though I did go out to, uh, lunch once and, um, with my family members that are, um, that are vaccinated. Yeah, I know. So even I am, uh, even I have loosened my own personal fucking uh, COVID restrictions in that regard. My point is that even in populated places like Oklahoma, we have less cases. COVID is communism, man. Please learn. Okay, dude, you're doing a really good job with this bit. I like it. Shut up. With Noel Miller too? Wait, what? No, I wasn't. What? Oklahoma. Oakley Dokley in Oklahoma. If you look at total cases and deaths per capita, red states are actually doing much worse. Hey, now get the fuck out of here with your science and mathematics. Don't try to, don't try to pin me into a corner with your algebra. More like Al Qaeda. Yeah, I found out that it's Arabic numerals. Ever since I found out that Arabs are personally responsible for Arabic numerals, I don't, I don't abide by that no more. No, here's what the conservatives are actually saying. Okay. They're looking at this and they're saying, look, it's all black people. Okay. If you want to know what the fucking real conservatives are saying about the situation, they're like, oh, well, look, it's black people that are violating COVID. It's black people that are doing this. It's black and brown people that are violating COVID. Look at them as though like they themselves are not literally fucking going up to, uh, you know, regular fucking store clerks and screaming in their faces, spitting in their face about how uh, they don't need to fucking wear a mask inside of the uh, Target. Okay? That's what the real argument is. But, but the problem is, you know, uh, it, it's not the fucking black people or the white people or anything like that. It's literally just uh, motherfuckers like Ron DeSantis straight up uh, saying, oh no, the, the fucking state is open. Uh, come now. 
the large crowd singing and dancing. But things quickly changed. Police eventually shot pepper balls into the crowd to speed up the disbursement, sending people running. In this area has become a tinder, and we cannot have a policy of simply hoping that um, it's not lit. We have to act before one of those incidents happen. We cannot act in the wake of something, and that is why preemptively we are taking action today. That action implementing an 8 p.m. curfew for Ocean Drive, Collins Avenue, Washington Avenue, and Espanola Way from 5th through 16th Streets. That is crazy. That is dumb. I don't like it. I hate it. I understand that some people came here and did some outlandish things, but they do that everywhere. I'm from Detroit. They come to our city and act up, but our mayor don't shut, make it a curfew because of that. But there are some tourists in support. The 8 p.m. curfew, it shouldn't be that big of a deal. You know what I mean? We've had curfew before. We still found ways to be with each other. And As a result, all businesses had to shut down and the streets had to be cleared of all people. In addition to the curfew, eastbound traffic on all three causeways to the beach were also closed to non-residents. Changes Mayor Dan Gilbert said was necessary to maintain residents and visitor safety. If we had a 500 or 1,000 guests and a very small percent uh, we're doing th we're acting out in ways that were improper or illegal. I am quite confident we could easily control that. But when you have 50,000 or 100,000, even if it's just a small percent of 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 those visitors, it's like X, you see, when you have 100,000 people watching you, 10% of your audience going into another person's chat is going to greatly fucking uh, change the chat culture of a smaller streamer. That's what basically they're saying is that just the numbers are far too great. Acting out. Well, then that becomes a challenge of an entirely different order. Oh, this is going to be a fun little video. Uh, Trump supporters are talking about, I think, Donnie O'Sullivan, our friend of the show right here. Uh, he went and he talked to, uh, he talked to a bunch of uh, Trump supporters uh, who said uh, they are not going to take the vaccine. Let's As take a more look. vaccines become available, the White House is increasingly worried by resistance among Republicans to getting the vaccine. An NPR PBS Marist poll this week finding 49 percent of Republican men, 49 percent of Republican men don't intend to get it. The good news is Trump finally encouraged his supporters to get vaccinated earlier this week. But will that make a dent in the misinformation already spreading among conservatives? CNN's Donnie O'Sullivan has more. Donnie O'Sullivan! Have you guys got your vaccine yet? I will no, not never going to take the vaccine. Why do I want somebody to push something onto me and not? I'm perfectly healthy and fine. We're not going to die for it. And you know what? If we do, then it was our time to go because we believe in God. Jesus fucking Christ, dude. Like, literal, like, biblical plague era way of thinking. Like, you are, you are straight up a fucking imbecile okay if this is your point of view you are too stupid to be alive it blows my fucking mind like this is christian science okay it, it blows my fucking mind that people actually fucking operate this way dude oh it was just our way to die it was just our time like shut up shut up shut up shut up shut up Former President Trump's team quietly announced at the start of March that Trump had taken the COVID-19 vaccine at the White House in January. Joining me right now. On Tuesday, he told Fox News. I would recommend it, and I would recommend it to a lot of people that don't want to get it. And a lot of those people voted for me, frankly. But, you know, I, again, we have our freedoms and we have to. Bitch, why didn't you do this when you originally got the vaccine back in January? Oh, no, because you were too busy fucking talking about how it's fake uh, or how, you know, the election was stolen from you, right? I wish. If he had talked about how he got the vaccine all the way back in fucking January, all right? If he had done that, which is a responsible thing to do in that situation, okay? There would be more Republicans and more uh, Trump loyalists that would... Uh, that would be uh, uh, comfortable with taking the fucking vaccine, but he took it secretly, okay? Uh, live by that. Trump takes credit. I don't see how that would have directly benefited him, so why would he have done it exactly? The vaccine. Yeah, he's giving them a 
they want. I think people are so brainwashed, they need to get a vaccine just so they can get on with their lives again. At a gathering of Trump supporters in Ventura, California in February, hardly anyone said they were going to take the vaccine. Some didn't even think Trump would take it. So you're not going to take the vaccine? Absolutely not. What if Trump came out and said, please, please take this vaccine? No, I don't believe he'll take it. Yeah, well, he did. Idiot. Vaccine hesitancy, in part fueled by dangerous misinformation, is higher among Republicans and Trump voters than other parts of the U.S. population. Speaking at this event was Judy Mikovits, a discredited researcher. Here's a, This is it, dude. This is the reason why we're fucking getting owned, by the way. Like, if you truly care about, like, American uh, hegemonic power, if you think that America needs to be, like, a world superpower or whatever the fuck and you're uh, worried about America losing its uh, superpower status, this is the reason. Like, this is why America is not going to uh, be a superpower in the next uh, 50 years. Because we have uh, too many fucking morons uh, in this country that unironically believe dumb shit like this. Sure, a known peddler of dangerous misinformation about COVID-19. A lot of people will say the message you're spreading of anti-mask, anti-vaccine is dangerous. And, and every piece of data says it's not dangerous. Has the mask helped you? No. You're going to get sick with a bacterial infection. Mikovits is wrong. The CDC and science says masks do work. Dr. Judy Mikovits was the star of Plandemic, a video that went viral on YouTube and Facebook last year, which was full of false claims about the coronavirus. And now false claims about the vaccine spreading on and offline. Fearmongering using false information about debt rates, and posts like this falsely claiming people over 60 need to be monitored for weeks after getting their shot. Are you planning on taking the vaccine? Yes. You are? I have an elderly father. He's 93 years old. I have to take it. I don't want to get him sick. I don't want to get somebody else's mother yeah, yeah. and father sick. You're the first person to tell me you're going to take the vaccine. Serious? Yeah. I think that a lot of the people who are angry and say they don't want to take the vaccine, a lot of them are more angry at the establishment of the lockdowns. So they take... They take their anger in different directions, mm. and they may say, screw the vaccine, screw all of Dr. Fauci, all that other stuff. I think a lot of them, out of anger, say stupid things. Yeah. But I really believe that a lot of everyone knows that this is real. Yeah. And it was a contributing factor to my mother's death three months ago. I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah, thank you. A conservative voice condemning vaccine misinformation, QAnon, and other dangerous conspiracy theories. But on the Ventura Promenade, as on the national stage, it wasn't long before it got drowned out. CNN, they're fake news. Why would you talk to a loser who, who lies 24-7? I've seen this guy before. Fake news. He's even probably framing you to look small, right? I was basically speaking up for the conservatives. And I'll be honest with you, I don't like CNN, but I'm talking to you because I want to get my point across. Yeah. Okay, well, <laughs> Doni O'Sullivan joins me now. Doni, it's always great reporting. Um, I missed it. Is there anything juicy there? CNN, Sorry. They're fake news. Yeah. But I really believe that a lot of everyone knows that this is real. Yeah. And it was a contributing factor to my mother's death three months ago. I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah, thank you. A conservative voice condemning vaccine misinformation. QAnon and other dangerous conspiracy theories. But on the Ventura Promenade, as on the national stage, it wasn't long before it got drowned out. CNN, they're fake news. Why would you talk to a loser who lies 24-7? I've seen the Bro, kid... Dog, you're 50, okay? Like, you shouldn't... The only time anyone should ever say libtard is ironically, okay? Like, if you're going to say, if you're going to say libtard, you should be joking about it, okay? But you definitely should never even, like, you should not say it when you're over the age of fucking 35. Like, imagine being a grown-ass man, dude. That's so, that's so strange. This guy before. Fake news. He's even probably framing you to look small, right? I was basically speaking up for the conservatives. And I'll be honest with you, I don't like CNN, but I'm talking to you because I want to get my point across. Yeah, I agree. That was it. I just hope that if you guys use this as a segment...
Okay, well, <laughs> Doni O'Sullivan joins me now. Doni, it's always great reporting. Um, and it's fascinating, though, to hear that man tell you that he thinks anger isn't about the vaccine. The anger is not about the vaccine. Do you think Trump supporters can be persuaded to take the vaccine if tensions settle down? I know that's a big if. Yeah, Don, I think we're in a sort of dangerous territory here where so many of the conspiracy theories that have been pushed about the election, about QAnon, anti-vax is now part of that. So for some Republicans, for some Trump supporters like the ones we spoke to there, it's part of their identity. And it's important to point out that some of the people featured in that piece said they believe in QAnon, said they want to see a military style coup in the United States, like is what is happening in Myanmar to bring Trump back. So unfortunately, you know, I think if we had said a year ago, you know, oh, it's only the QAnon folks that are anti-vax, we might have not known that there was that many QAnon followers. Now, after the insurrection, after everything else, we can see we don't know precise numbers, but we know there are a lot of QAnon followers out there and QAnon forums are totally anti-vax anytime I go on online on this. I mean, honestly, like uh, the way that some social media companies have dealt with it thus far has been uh, effective in at least curbing some of the uh, most insane uh, parts of uh, the QAnon misinformation like actually starting to uh deal with like all the QAnon uh, misinformation so i don't know if they can um i don't know if they can deal with it a little bit further i, I don't know if you can actually deal with like the fucking misinfo um as far as vaccinations goes can we talk about how the lgbtq community is that being majority of anti-vax as well i don't understand that what 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 do you mean the lg the majority of the LGBTQ community is uh, anti-vax. <laughs> what? I'm done. Okay, I don't know if, the, if your answer is going to be different in this, because uh, in full transparency, you shot that before Trump said to, you, he, he at least somehow, somewhat encouraged uh, his supporters to get um, the vaccine. But there, there was one lady in there that said she wouldn't take the vaccine because Trump wouldn't take it. Well, he did take it. So, so anyways, do you think that they may, that may change now since he has encouraged people to do it? It's possible, but from speaking to a lot of those folks, they also said, oh, well, Trump only came up with the vaccine because he was trying to appease the Democrats. And they essentially were saying the vaccine is useless. So uh, some of them think that they're sort of in on it with Trump and that even at that message that Trump said to Fox News this week, he, he, he told people to take the vaccine, but then he sort of qualified it talking about freedom and things. And I think a lot of the people you've seen in that piece, a lot of the QAnon followers will be listening to the second part of what Trump said on Fox News, which was said, it's freedom, it's a choice, don't do anything you don't want to do. Hey, Donny, I have to go. It's just real quick. Are any of those people reachable? Like, will any of those people ever believe in the truth or facts? Well, I have spoken to some folks who have left QAnon. Unfortunately, uh, they are few and far between. But what we have seen from the people who do get out of these conspiracy theories, who do get out of these cults, is they need family members, they need friends around them who will empathetically, if possible, try pull them out of it. But it's a really, really difficult thing to do. It's fascinating to watch, Tony. Thank you very much. I want to bring in now Ben Decker. He is a New York Times contributor and digital investigator uh, with a focus. Okay, I'm bored of the, the rest of this. Okay, why you can't compare the COVID-19 vaccines? This is a pretty informative video from Vox. That, uh, this is the new one-dose COVID-19 vaccine from Johnson. Macy's, you made a fucking bomb-ass playlist, my friend. Johnson. In early March, more than 6,000 doses were supposed to be shipped to the city of Detroit, Michigan. But the mayor said, no thanks. Moderna and Pfizer are the best, and I am going to do everything I can to make sure that we're- So this is bullshit. Like, literally everyone says, whichever one that you can get, you should get. There is no, like, there is no ifs, ands, or buts in this. Like, if you can get the uh, AstraZeneca is, is going through the clinical trials in America right now. There was some fears in Europe over blood clots, but I believe that uh, uh, those fears were uh, unfounded for the most part. 137 blood clots in comparison to millions of people that have been vaccinated. Uh, but uh, in the United States, you have the Pfizer, BioNTech one, and you have the Moderna one. 
those are the two shot ones and then you have the johnson and johnson one which is a one shot one which is less uh like people are saying is less effective overall than uh the pfizer one but it doesn't fucking matter you should literally take whichever one you can no matter what happens um because you are still going to be more protected overall uh than 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 not having it okay residents of the city of detroit get the best he was referring to these numbers the vaccine's efficacy rates the vaccines from pfizer biontech and moderna have super high efficacy rates 95 and 94 percent but johnson and johnson just 66. and if you only look at these numbers it's natural to think that these vaccines are worse than these but that assumption is wrong these numbers are arguably not even the most important measure of how effective these vaccines are. To understand what is, you first have to understand what vaccines are even supposed to do. A vaccine's efficacy rate is calculated in large... Yeah, the U.S. trial of AstraZeneca uh, vaccine is at 79% uh, efficacy effectiveness and with no increased blood clot risk. According to the 32,000 people that were... Uh, were were uh, uh, tried for the record, so it's that's going to be uh, entering the marketplace soon as well. Large clinical trials, when the vaccine is tested on tens of thousands of people, those people are broken into two groups: half get the vaccine and half get a placebo. Then they're sent out to live their lives while scientists monitor whether or not they get COVID-19 over several months. In the trial for Pfizer-BioNTech, for example, there were 43,000 participants. In the end, 170 people were infected with COVID-19. And how those people fall into each of these groups determines a vaccine's efficacy. If the 170 were evenly split, that would mean you're just as likely to get sick with the vaccine as without it. So it would have a 0% efficacy. If all 170 were in the placebo group and zero people who got the vaccine were sick, the vaccine would have an efficacy of 100%. With this particular trial, there were 162 in the placebo group and just eight in the vaccine group. It means those who had the vaccine were 95% less likely to get COVID-19. The vaccine had a 95% efficacy. Now, this doesn't mean if 100 people are vaccinated, five of them will get sick. Instead, that 95% number applies to the individual. So each vaccinated person is 95% less likely than a person without a vaccine to get sick each time they're exposed to COVID-19. And every vaccine's efficacy rate is calculated in the same way. But each vaccine's trial might be done in very different circumstances. So one of the biggest considerations here uh, when we look at these numbers is the timing in which these clinical trials were performed. This is the number of daily COVID-19 cases in the U.S. since the pandemic began. The Moderna trial was done completely in the U.S. here in the summer. The Pfizer-BioNTech trial was primarily based in the U.S. too, and at the same time. Johnson & Johnson, however, held their U.S. trial at this time when they're... That's part of the reason why the Johnson & Johnson efficacy uh, numbers are, are lower than uh, Moderna and Pfizer, by the way. There were more opportunities for participants to be exposed to infections. And most of their trial took place in other countries, primarily South Africa and Brazil. And in these other countries, not only were case rates high, but the virus itself was different. The trials took place as variants of COVID-19 emerged and became dominant infections in these countries, variants that are more likely to get participants sick. In South Africa, most of the cases in the Johnson & Johnson trial were that of the variant, not the original strain that was in the US over the summer. And despite that, it still significantly reduced infections. If you're trying to make one-to-one head-to-head -one -head comparisons between vaccines, they need to have been studied in the same trial with the same inclusion criteria in the same parts of the world at the same time. If we were to take 
Pfizer and Moderna's vaccine and redo their clinical trial at the same time that we saw the J&J's uh, clinical trial, we might see quite different efficacy. But we don't know that. For the record, we do not know that, okay? That's like, that is still speculative. Numbers for those. These efficacy numbers really just tell you what happened in each vaccine's trial, not exactly what will happen in the- I know she said might, but it doesn't matter because a lot of people will literally fucking look at that and go, oh, well, uh, okay, I guess that's like, uh, I guess that means that the efficacy rate for Johnson Johnson is normal or the Pfizer one is really high. Well, it doesn't matter. It's just, again, it's, it's speculative. Just making sure that you understand that. Real world. But many experts argue this isn't even the best number to judge a vaccine by anyway, because preventing any infection at all is not always the point of a vaccine. The goal of a vaccine program for COVID-19 is not necessarily to get to COVID-0, but it's to tame this virus, to defang it, to remove its ability to cause serious disease, hospitalization, and death. It helps to look at the different outcomes of an exposure to COVID-19 like this. The best case scenario is you don't get sick at all. The worst case is death. In between, there's being hospitalized, severe to moderate symptoms, or having no symptoms at all. In the absolute best circumstances, vaccines give you protection all the way to here. But realistically, that isn't the main objective of COVID-19 vaccines. The real purpose is to give your body enough protection to cover these possibilities. So if you do get an infection, it feels more like a cold than something you'd be hospitalized for. And this is one thing that every one of these COVID-19 vaccines do well. In all these trials, while some people in the placebo groups were hospitalized or even died from COVID-19, not one fully vaccinated person in any of these trials was hospitalized or died from COVID-19. One thing that I wish that Mary would have understood was that all three vaccines have essentially 100% effectiveness in protecting from death. The mayor of Detroit did backtrack and said he'd start taking Johnson & Johnson doses because it's still highly effective against what we care about most. Efficacy matters, but it doesn't matter the most. The question isn't which vaccine will protect you from any COVID infection, but which one will keep you alive or out of the hospital? Which one will help end the pandemic? And that's any of them. The best vaccine right now for you is the one that you're offered. With each shot that goes in someone's arm, we get closer to the end of this pandemic. There you go. I, am I a fucking lab rat? I go to a trial, I take the fucking placebo and, uh, placebo and die of COVID-19, fuck science. Are you stupid? Are you actually a stupid person? What do you mean? Like... I'm so confused. Like, yeah, you you were, even if you fucking didn't uh, go to that trial, you still were going to get COVID and die then. You understand that, right? You just, you know, uh, signed on for a trial and now your death will be, will have meaning. Does this data include the Chinese vaccine that Turkish people are getting well? No, I, I don't know. Uh, I don't have information on the Chinese one. No, but you are deceived to think you may have gotten vaccinated. Dude, you're literally not supposed to. You're still supposed to fucking follow a uh, COVID restrictions. Like when you get the fucking vaccine, it's not a guarantee at that point that it, that vaccine is going to save you. It's a trial. You shouldn't be fucking running around anyway. And also, you're aware that you might not have gotten the fucking uh, vaccine and you might have actually gotten the placebo regardless. Okay? That's like, that's literally something they communicate to you. Moving on. Our main story is... There's a dildo on this one, apparently, at some point. So I'm going to fucking try to hide it. But uh, today, uh, John Oliver is talking about plastics, boys. Yeah, last uh, pog tonight.
and I concerned plastic. It's very much the Jane Lynch of materials in that it's incredibly versatile, appears in almost everything, and it isn't going